Today I'm going to be demonstrating and reviewing a product called IsoStick. So what is IsoStick? Well, for one, it's a USB memory stick. And it's kind of a micro SD reader at the same time. On the side, there's a micro SD card slot supporting up to 64 gigabytes of memory, uh, which then uh, is the memory for this stick. But this also allows you to boot straight ISOs from your computer from this device. So how does it do that? Well, when you open up the boot menu, it shows up as both a USB thumb drive or a USB memory stick and a USB CD-ROM drive. Now I'm just going to give you a few seconds to wrap your head around that. Don't worry, I'll wait. So you load all of your ISOs onto this stick. You choose the USB CD-ROM drive and then you boot from this device. And then it gives you a list of all the ISOs on the stick. And that is pretty cool. Now there are a few downsides to this. Some computers, while they do let you boot from either a USB CD-ROM drive or just a USB stick, they do throttle the limit um, of the USB drive at the BIOS level to USB 1.1. Now you're generally going to find this on a lot older machines. Um, nothing current. They all work just fine. The good thing about this too is if they don't throttle the speeds, some computers will not let you boot from a USB memory stick, but they will support a USB um, CD-ROM drive. And so this thing would boot just fine. So first I'm going to go ahead and show you the software side of stuff in Windows, and then we're going to come back and we're going to try booting some ISOs. So let's get started. When you first insert ISO stick into your computer, it will show up as a drive letter, as well as a uh, CD-ROM. Now ISO stick supports up to 64 gigabyte micro SD. Now once you get that high, the stick does come preformatted as the um, EX FAT file system. And you have to, and Windows will not let you I think it's over 32 gigabytes to format in FAT32, which the device does require. So you have to go get a uh, format utility which lets you format um, USB thumb drives and stuff as FAT32. The one I like is called the, it's the HP USB formatter or something, and it lets you format anything to FAT32. So that works pretty good. So the setup for this device is really simple. Now, to be fair, you've been able to boot off um, ISOs off uh, USB memory for a very long time. The thing that separates this from that method is this shows up on a hardware level as a physical CD-ROM drive. So there are some things like Windows, uh, the Windows 7, Windows Vista, ISO images that you can't boot directly from the ISO using the old method it would get to a certain point during the install, during the setup, and say, I can't find a driver. That is because it's looking for the driver in a physical uh, CD-ROM drive. And it's not there, so it bombs out. And because uh, this shows up to the computer and the BIOS as a physical CD-ROM drive, it overcomes some of the limitations that um, some have using the old method, like um, bootloaders and stuff. And this is in hardware where it shows up as a, as a CD-ROM drive. So once we open it up, um, I put a lot of this stuff on my stick, but all you need to boot the ISOs is a folder called config. You open that up, and this ISO, this is the actual bootloader. And this you download from their website, just a single file. And they also require you to create this file. It's just a regular um, TXT file. So I mean, all you do is just do new txt file and then you just type in that file name and press enter. Now the instructions were a little confusing where in the instructions they said well you can make a new text file with this file name and for the time being we can leave it blank. The contents of it. And then if you read down below it says well for this to actually boot this has to be pointing to any kind of ISO image. So I open it up and if you look inside here 
This has to point to just any one of your ISO images for the bootloader to actually work. This will probably get fixed in a firmware upgrade, but they said for now, you got to do it. So I have a folder on my removable disk called ISOs. And in there is all my ISOs that I can boot from. We have uh, Windows Vista, you know, Windows 7, 8, hell, even Windows 98, if I ever need it, uh, Dell um, XP, and here's my SpinRite one. So basically I went to my text file and just did, which does not require a slash, the name of the folder, which was just the ISOs, slash the name of the ISO, which was SpinRite.ISO. And then I saved it. And then from then on, my bootloader worked just fine. Otherwise, it just wouldn't load the bootloader. And that's it. That's how easy it is to set up. You then, uh, you do not need your ISOs in a special ISO folder. They can be in any folder on the drive um, in up to 10 directories deep. That's as far as it will search. So when you boot off the USB th stick, the thing will actually go through your entire directory structure looking for ISOs and present to you them in the list. In this case, I thought I'd just kind of keep them all in one spot, make it a little bit quicker. I would assume if it had to go searching each and every time in multiple directories, it might slow it down. I don't know. I just thought I'd make a directory called ISO and use that. So really, you have this config folder. You put both these things in there, and then you start populating your drive with ISO images. That is it. That's the whole setup. So now let's go to one of my workstations behind me, my test machine, and let's boot some ISOs. Before we get started, there was one thing I forgot to mention to you. On the side of this device, there is a write protection switch. It's actually right here. Red means the device is unlocked and stuff could potentially write itself to the device. If you, It's actually um, receded too, so you can't accidentally do anything. So stick a pen in there and then shut the gap to where the red is no longer showing and then the device is locked. Also, to update the firmware on the, this device, you have to plug the stick in and before you can upgrade the firmware, you probably can't see it on the camera, but there is a little teeny hole that you stick a paper clip in and push. And then this device is ready for a firmware update. The firmware process or the firmware update process is Dead simple, takes 10 seconds. Um, the instructions are very easy on the website and the utility is also downloadable from their website. So okay, now one thing I want to show you too is what this device, for me at least, replaced. So this single device actually replaced all of this. So here I have just a bunch of setup tools on the hard drive. This one's my uh, BART PE, True Image, SpinWrite, the installers for Windows um, Vista 7 and 8, Kaspersky Rescue, and a USB stick with um, all my repair tools on it as well that I carry with me. Now, just one little stick. So let's go ahead and boot some ISOs. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and insert the stick into the computer, and then we're going to go ahead and turn the computer on, and then open up the boot menu. So here's our boot list. As you'll see, towards the bottom, there is one called USB. Um, ISO stick CD-ROM drive. Now the bootloader loads every other time, meaning when you select the boot device, it shows you all of the ISOs on your stick. Now once you select one, it reboots, and then you select that USB CD-ROM drive again, and then it proceeds to boot the ISO. So it reboots, loads the ISO you chose, the next time you reboot, it shows you this image. So let's go ahead, for instance, and start with Windows XP. We select it, and then the computer is going to restart again. And this time we're going to load the bootloader back up, F10. Check. 
choose the USB-C ROM drive, and now it's going to boot the Windows XP ISO. This by itself kind of blows my mind. I got a squeaky chair. Uh, yes, I know. Now, once this setup restarts, obviously it's going to default back to no ISO selected. So all you got to do then is select the Windows XP ISO one more time because after it reboots into the GUI interface, it does require the um, ISO to be loaded one more time. So we're going to go ahead and select Enter. And you can see the speed difference installing off the stick. Okay, I'm back. I had to actually shut the computer off and uh, attach the power adapter to the um, SSD. So anyway, uh, this is our actual um, thumb drive. And because we actually put it in a right protected state, even if we select it by accident, we could not erase the device, which is nice. This is my 30 gigabyte solid state. So let's just go ahead and nuke those. And this will show you the speed of installing off a USB drive. Now they say the USB drive is equivalent to about, about a 9x CD-ROM drive, but with no seek time. The transfer rate to actually get the information to the device is around 5 to 6 megs. I took the uh, micro SD card out of the device, put it in a reader, got slightly better, about 7 to 8 megs per second. So it takes a while to transfer, but once it's there, you know, you only have to do it once. Now once this computer restarts after this process, um, it will default back to not knowing which ISO you want to boot from. So if you didn't choose another ISO, um, it would get to the GUI setup of the installation and say, I can't find the disk. So what you got to do is just reselect that same ISO, and this is only 4 XP. Windows 7, after it reboots, you do not need to reselect the ISO. Okay, so that gave you an example of Windows XP. Let's boot something else. Let's boot the Windows 7 install off the device. Okay, so that gave you an example of Windows XP. Let's go ahead and boot Windows 7 off this device. Um, Windows 7 64 bit to be exact. And this is, like I said before, booting off a single ISO file. And I'm going to show you that it no longer dies out looking for that driver.
And so here is where it would normally die. You would not get to this screen. So that works. So that's about it. I mean, you can see everything that loads. Uh, we're going to go ahead and try the Hiren's Boot CD. As our final. And graphics, that's just a driver pack. It has an ISO file. Let's just do this one. Reboot. There we go. So we're good. So anyway, this has been my test, review, and demonstration of the IsoStick. It retails for about $99 from isostick.com and plus the cost of the micro SD card. So anyway, thanks for watching.